X-Class, says Mercedes, is a pickup that knows no compromise. It's easily the most desirable contender in this growing segment, the Rolls-Royce option, if you have a premium budget for the purchase of a light truck of this kind. If you want a pickup and can afford the asking prices, we're pretty sure you'd like one. It had to come, a premium brand pickup truck. The Mercedes X-Class brings up market values to this utilitarian sector in a form the company hopes that successful private buyers will find hard to resist. And the idea of a Mercedes pickup might sound unusual, but it really shouldn't. Uh, the Stuttgart manufacturer has every credential necessary to produce such a thing. It's a familiar force in the light commercial market, thanks to a well-regarded range of vans. And extreme off-roaders like the uh, tough G-Class SUV and the mighty Unimog suggest that the company has all the expertise that's needed to produce the ultimate kind of truck. Interestingly, it's chosen not to use that engineering heritage here, instead developing the X-Class as part of a joint project which has also produced two other pickup models, uh, the Renault Alaskan and the second generation version of the much better known Nissan Navara. Was that wise? Well, it wouldn't have been if Mercedes uh, had just rebadged an ordinary volume product, but according to the brand, that's not what's happened here. Hundreds of millions of euros having been spent in turning those Nissan underpinnings into what's marketed as the first pickup from a premium manufacturer. It isn't actually. Uh, Cadillac and Lincoln have been selling trucks of this kind for years. The concept is, however, new for the European market and also for ours, where the pickup segment's currently growing at the rate of about 15% a year, with around 55,000 annual sales, many of them to the well-heeled private small business owners that are being targeted here. Now, as you might expect, premium branding means premium pricing, but with the tax loopholes that come as part of pickup ownership, that might not matter too much. If it doesn't, then the X-Class looks, on paper at least, to be a cut above its mainstream rivals, promising to combine their tough practicality with a classier driving experience, a smarter cabin, and higher standards of safety and media connectivity. For work, rest, and play, it promises not only to be all the car you'll ever need, but all also, all the car you might ever want. Can a truck ever really deliver on that kind of billing? Time to find out. Don't listen to anyone who tells you that what's on offer with this X-Class is nothing but a rebadged Nissan Navara. Now, yes, the two vehicles were designed as part of a joint project that Mercedes entered into with the Renault-Nissan Alliance, but they uh, very much retain their own distinct characters. Now, you get a feel for that if you look at what's actually different here, and that is just about everything that matters. This is a slightly bigger vehicle than its Japanese cousin uh, with a wider track and a stronger chassis. Plus, there's a top V6 version of this model with a permanent four-wheel drive system. And that's a package that you can't have with the Nissan and Renault versions of this design. Uh, even the things that are supposed to be the same, well, kind of aren't. Uh, we'll get to the shared engines in a minute, but let's start with the area in which this X-Class sets new standards for the pickup segment. That's handling and ride quality. If you're familiar with this class of vehicle, you might know that in 2015, uh, the second generation Nissan Navara revolutionized this sector by breaking away from the old fashioned leaf sprung rear axle format that was previously deemed mandatory if a proper one ton payload was gonna be maintained. And instead, that model pioneered the use of a multi-link rear axle and coil springs, the kind of things that you get in an SUV, although in this case provided with a strengthened design that maintained the necessary payload capacity and which was uh, more appropriate to the needs of a pickup. Uh, now Mercedes had insisted on this expensive and very complicated piece of development as a prerequisite for getting involved in this project. The Navara sourced engineering simply had to deliver them a starting point for a pickup that uh, to some degree at least could conduct itself in a way that a Mercedes bar would expect. Does it? Well, to some extent, yes. Uh, however much sophisticated engineering you throw at a pickup, it's never going to be completely car-like. In fact, if a model of this kind ever were, you'd be well advised to steer well clear of it because it wouldn't be very much use for the tough, 
practical things that pickups are supposed to be good at. Sure enough, if you drive an X-Class over a poorly surfaced section of tarmac, you'll get more of a fidgety feel to the ride than you ever would in a large SUV. Uh, there is, after all, only so much that an engineer can do when the product in question has to have a tough, unyielding ladder frame chassis. Uh, that has its effect through the turns too. I mean, if at speed you try to throw this pickup at a tight corner with any degree of enthusiasm, all you're going to experience is an armful of understeer. But, and this is the important bit, what you don't get here is the crashing over major bumps and potholes and the roly-poly cornering at speed that afflicts just about every other light truck in this segment. Uh, the Navara sets a fresh dynamic standard in this regard, but Mercedes still wasn't completely happy with it, so they spent a further couple of years refining the package, and to very good effect too. You get a level of stability and comfort at speed that no other pickup can get close to equaling, and a truck that's capable of propelling itself around switchback corners in a manner which will truly surprise you if you come to this model after familiarity with its competitors. It still doesn't take particularly kindly to really rapid direction changes, but when you're driving more sedately, you'll find that most of the time you'll forget that you're in a commercial vehicle at all. Um, a day at the wheel of an ordinary pickup can be, well, extremely tiring unless it's exclusively made up of motorway mileage. With an X-Class, though, uh, you'll emerge far more relaxed. Refinement helps here too, and one of the things we criticised about the Mark II model Navara when we tested that uh, was the relative lack of refinement on offer from its 2.3 litre four-cylinder diesel power plant, and that's the unit that volume versions of this X-Class must use too. Uh, Mercedes also obviously thought so because it's thrown a whole stack of sound deadening material at the problem and has recalibrated both the engine and the transmission. The result is a big improvement, and although there is still more noise from under the bonnet than some Mercedes buyers might expect, uh, particularly at tickover, highway driving is calm and again it's distinctly un-LCV-like and that's aided by impressively low levels of wind noise given the inherently boxy shape. As with the Navara and its stablemate, the Renault Alaskan, the 2.3 litre black pump fueled unit is available in two states of tune. Uh, entry level X220D variants feature it with 163 HP. We'd avoid them, firstly because with that entry level derivative you're denied the option of the 7 speed auto gearbox that you really need for the complete X class experience. And secondly, because the hefty weight of an X class, it's well over 2.2 tonnes, uh, means that it needs a bit more grunt than that base unit can provide if it's going to shift itself along with any kind of real alacrity. With all that in mind, we opted to test the version of this Mercedes that most customers will choose, the 190HP X250D. This comes only with 7-speed auto transmission. That's a gearbox which is a little sluggish between changes, but it's silky smooth and perfectly suited to the more refined demeanour that is this pickup's calling card. Uh, the self-shifter does dull the acceleration advantage you might expect this upgraded engine to provide. Uh, the rest of 62 miles an hour time of 11.8 seconds is only about a second faster than the lesser unit can manage and the top speed of 109 miles an hour is virtually the same. Uh, torque output though rises by just over 10% to 450 newton meters and that's enough to get rid of the slightly underpowered feeling you get with the X220D. Of course, though, it can't get close to the potent surge of forward motion that you get in the X-Class variant that all buyers would probably ideally want, uh, the V6-engined X350D. This 258HP 3-litre diesel puts out 550 newton meters and it gets the more modern 9-speed auto gearbox that Mercedes uses in its passenger car range. The X350D uh, will make it from 0 to 62 in 7.9 seconds on the way to a top speed of 127 miles an hour. Also features a more sophisticated formatic four-wheel drive system than the four-cylinder X-Class variants can offer. That's a permanent setup that makes the vehicle less prone to the need for traction control intervention when you power out of slow corners on slippery days. 
Here though, we've got the uh, Nissan developed part-time formatic setup that you have to have on the X220 or X250D, and that's operable via this uh, dashboard rotary controller. Most of the time, you'll be keeping the vehicle rear-driven in two-wheel drive, but if conditions worsen at speeds of up to 62 miles an hour, you'll be able to shift it into all-wheel driven 4H mode. And that's ideal for icy mornings. Uh, switching further into low range requires you to stop and straighten the front wheels and select neutral. Um, once you've done that uh, and you're engaged in the 4L setting, you'll find yourself at the wheel of something that feels really very capable indeed, more so than a Navara would be. And that's thanks to this X-Class model's wider front and rear track. Just how capable? Well, that depends to some extent on whether you've taken up the two key options for off-road use that Mercedes offers. Uh, an increased ground clearance package raises the ride height by 20 millimeters to 221 mils and will get you to really gnarly muddy tracks. And once you're there, if you fitted the optional rear axle differential lock, you should be able to keep plowing on, ideally with the underside of the vehicle protected by the extra cost underride guide panel. Um, with all this in place, your X-Class can offer quite a promising set of off-roading stats. Uh, hill start assist will get you going up inclines with an approach angle as steep as 30.1 degrees. Uh, at the top of the slope, you'll be aided by a ramp breakover angle of uh, 22 degrees. And then uh, DSR, a downhill speed regulator, that's basically hill descent control, will ease you down the hill into a departure angle of up to 25.9 degrees. Uh, this Mercedes will wade through water up to 600 millimeters deep. It uh, offers impressive levels of wheel articulation. And if you're driving along an incline, you can tilt it sideways by up to 49.8 degrees before it topples over. No, we're not gonna put that one to the test. The relatively slow-witted, rather light hydraulic steering, which is a bit of an impediment at speeds through the turns on tarmac, is another thing that'll help you off-road. And it's a willing partner in the more likely scenario of uh, urban manoeuvrability. Uh, you will need quite a lot of space to facilitate the 13.4-meter wall-to-wall turning circle. And annoyingly, parking sensors are optional even on the most expensive variants. But parking is aided by a better view out over the bonnet than you'll get in the Navara and there is a standard provision of a rear view camera on all derivatives. Let's face it, pickup design is by and large pretty boxy and uninspiring, which is why we were particularly admiring of Concept X-Class, the prototype model Mercedes paraded to tease interest in this X-Class before the production version was launched. Aesthetically, it was sleek and desirable in a way that no small truck ever previously had been. So it was a touch disappointing to find the finished showroom model was rather more conservatively styled. It has got presence though, and hey, it is big, at least by European standards anyway, 40 millimeters longer and 38 mils wider than its Nissan design stablemate. You certainly don't get any hint of the shared parentage with the Navara model here at the front, styled to give the X-Cross the masterful looks of one of the brand's luxury SUVs. All the brand's usual crossover cues are here, uh, the centrally positioned star, the twin Louvre radiator grille, uh, the high and powerfully honed bonnet, and headlamps that extend back into the wings. More aggressive is this lower bumper panel, which is wide, expansive, and fundamentally practical to emphasize the further changes made over this pickup Nissan Cousin, notably the wider track and also the chassis reinforcements. Um, this particular variant's top level of trim is designated by full LED headlights and this chrome trimmed simulated underguard. Which is just as well because if you move to the side you'll find that this Mercedes looks very Navara-like indeed. From profile perspective, in fact, the two trucks are virtually identical, apart from, of course, uh, this X-Class model's chosen wheel designs. Uh, buyers get a choice of 17 or 18-inch rims, got the larger size here, uh, with bigger 19 inches available on request. Uh, these optional roof rails and running boards provide a finishing touch. Uh, now, Mercedes declines to offer the alternative king cab body style that you will get on the Nissan, with its backwards opening doors and occasional rear seats. So it's this double cab derivative or nothing. That's the format that almost everyone will want. Now we talked earlier about size. Uh, this model is pushing the boundaries here. It's 55 millimeters longer than a class favorite like Mitsubishi's L200. 
And at the rear, well, this was the part of the vehicle that looked so great in prototype form, where the sleekly curved tailgate was entirely encircled by a distinctive frame of LED illumination. In comparison, this production model epitomizes nothing more than conventionality, although this top spec version does try to smarten things up with impractical chrome trimming for the bumper and brighter LED tail lights. Time to step up into the cabin and take a seat inside. Ever seen a pickup interior quite like this? No, we haven't either. Immediately striking is the center of the dash with its twin dual panels of aeronautically inspired air vents, which sit just below this uh, freestanding tablet style infotainment screen. Uh, the three spoke wheel feels like a sporty quality item and the deeply cowled instrument gauges that you view through it are lifted from the C-Class. Add in the stitched Artico leather and Dynamico microfiber trim of this top variant and the executive ambience will be complete or almost complete anyway. Some writers have moaned that the hard, durable plastic used further down the dash and around the gear stick are inappropriate to a Mercedes. We'd only say that they're certainly not inappropriate to a pickup. In our eyes, uh, this is a kind of finish that's necessary for this model's station in life. And anyway, there's plenty of compensation provided in the areas that don't have to withstand regular scuffs and scratches and kicks. Uh, the soft touch top of the fascia and this silver trimmed lower part of the center stack, for example. Now we talked about this big prominent infotainment screen where you won't have to stab away at this with your finger in the way that you would have to with the monitors that are supplied in rival models because there are separate controls for this just here below the gear stick. This rather futuristic looking protuberance manages with all your informational needs with a rotary dial that swivels and slides and pushes below a higher surface touchpad that permits letters and numbers and special characters to be handwritten although in this right hand drive model of course there's the awkwardness of having to do that with your left hand uh, the display that this setup controls comes a standard in seven inch audio 20 form but here it's been upgraded to the larger 8.4 inch size that comes with optional uh, command online setup. With this, as well as the usual eight speaker DAB audio system, uh, media interface and Bluetooth connectivity, you get hard disk drive 3D navigation, live traffic information and Lingotronic voice control. What else? Uh, well, the seats are very comfortable, particularly the eight-way electrically adjustable chairs fitted to this top variant. It is a pity, though, that only the priciest trim level would give you lumbar support. Uh, naturally, there's the high-set seating position that's common to every pickup, and you get a good view out frontwards over the long bonnet. Uh, now, unfortunately, your view rearwards is obscured by the window pillars and by the relatively small rear screen. It's just as well, then, that a rear-view camera is standard. Now, sadly, rear parking sensors aren't. Cabin storage is reasonable but not exemplary. Uh, between the seats you get twin cup holders uh, by the thankfully conventional handbrake but they can't be as large as they otherwise would be because of the sighting of the infotainment controller just ahead of them. Uh, if they're in use then you might struggle to find somewhere to put your mobile phone given the absence of a storage area at the base of the centre stack here. Still, you do get an overhead compartment for your sunglasses, uh, a large glove box, decently sized door bins and a netted pocket in the uh, front passenger footwell. Finally, let's mention that a few hints of this design's uh, Nissan shared parentage can be found if you care to look for them uh, with the four wheel drive switch gear and perhaps more notably uh, with the ignition key. Uh, you really would have thought Mercedes could have developed their own. Time to take a seat in the back. Now we've yet to find a double cab pickup with a rear section you could describe as truly comfortable for a couple of adults over longer journeys. Uh, this isn't it. A uh, little disappointingly, this X-Class model's slight increase in length hasn't been used to give the rear backrest a more uh, car-like angle of recline, so you uh, sit pretty bolt upright. At least if you've drawn the short straw and got yourself placed in the middle, you'll find that the relatively low set transmission tunnel doesn't impede your legs too much. To be fair, double cab buyers don't tend to transport large adults over long distances 
And what's provided here is no worse than you'll find in rival models. Uh, here, six foot passengers who don't mind their heads slightly brushing the roof lining will find themselves easily able to fit in behind six foot front occupants. Uh, there is also the bonus of being able to flip up this seat base to access two hidden storage compartments or to create an extra area for transporting items that you don't want to consign to the cargo bay. Uh, this opening centre rear window is a nice touch. It's electrically operable as an option on this top model. Uh, the basics are well covered off too with seat back pockets, uh, twin vents, a 12 watt socket and decently sized door bins all provided. A few basics to start with then. XVAT pricing ranges in the 28 to 40,000 pound bracket and most models will be bought with the four cylinder 2.3 litre diesel engine that we're trying here, uh, offered with 163 HP and a six speed manual gearbox in the base X220D or with 190 HP and seven speed automatic transmission in this mid range X250D version. Part time formatic four wheel drive is standard with both those mainstream offerings. Ironically, the most serious permanently active automated formatic setup is reserved for the variant that's least likely to ever see tough off-road use, uh, the flagship auto-only X350D model, which uses a potent 258 HP 3 litre V6 diesel. You'll need to know that this X-Class pickup is only sold by Mercedes-Benz van dealers, so don't expect to find it occupying showroom space with the brand's premium SUVs at your local dealer. Uh, that should clue you into the fact that for all the lifestyle marketing, the company still sees this as, uh, to some extent anyway, a tough working vehicle. And if that is what you want, then you'll need one of the entry-level pure-spec four-cylinder models, which will appeal to tradespeople who need a truck for work, but who would like one with a little more kudos. These people might be a touch disappointed to find that only this double cab body style is offered. You can't have the single cab or extended single cab options which are available from many major rivals. The wealthy owner operators who will account for the majority of sales won't be bothered about that at all and these people won't hesitate to find the additional cash which is necessary to upgrade to one of the plusher X-Class variants. Uh, an extra £1,200 over base spec gets you mid-range progressive trim or if you're going with this X250D derivative you'll be offered the chance to find around £4,800 over base trim and get yourself the top power spec that we're trying here. Although by that point you'll be getting on towards a £35,000 XVAT price point. In fact, in the form tested here with a few extras added, uh, the XVAT asking price would be around £40,000. I'll get to the reasons why in a minute. You'd expect those kinds of figures to be well above those being asked for pickups from the mainstream brands, and you'd be right. A comparable Nissan Navara with much of the same engineering and exactly the same 2.3 litre diesel engine would save you a significant sum, about £6,000. A more relevant comparison, though, can be made with the pickup that, until the arrival of this Mercedes, was the go-to choice if you wanted a really premium model in this segment, the Volkswagen Amarok. Uh, now, the Amarok is only available with a 3-litre V6 TDI diesel, offered in 163, 204 or 224 PS states of tune. Pitch against one of those variants, an X-Class model, which will almost certainly have a four-cylinder engine. And for this Merc, you'll probably be looking at needing to find a premium it'll be somewhere between three and three and a half thousand pounds more depending on the derivative you're looking at of course, you might also take the view that a really high-spec version of a volume brand pickup would be a reasonably comparable alternative to this Mercedes. And if that's the case, then a brief perusal of the price list will quickly confirm that for about the price of the least expensive, lowest-powered, most Spartan X-Class, you could get yourself any number of leather-lined, more powerful rivals in their most highly trimmed guises, say a Ford Ranger Wildtrack, uh, a Toyota Hilux Invincible, a Fiat Fullback Cross, an Isuzu D-Max Blade or a Mitsubishi L200 Barbarian, for example. But, of course, all of these will depreciate far quicker than this Mercedes will. If, having considered all of that, you conclude it is an X-Class you really want, uh, then you're going to want to know a little more detail on equipment level. So, let's look at that now. 
as we've already said, entry-level pure spec is very much work orientated, but even here you get features like a reversing camera, front fog lights, powered mirrors, daytime running lights, cruise control, semi-automatic air conditioning, and a full-size spare wheel. Plus you get a decent Audio 20 CD infotainment system with a touchpad and a seven inch center dash screen via which you can access a DAB tuner, Bluetooth audio, and a media interface. And there's an impressive range of standard safety equipment, which we'll get to shortly. Talking of information technology, like most premium brands, Mercedes has developed systems that allow you to monitor many aspects of your vehicle from your smartphone. Uh, every X-Class model comes as standard with the Mercedes Me Connect standard services package, uh, which works via a free app. Now this reminds you when a service is due and it can automatically detect and share with you uh, details on your car's wear and tear items. In addition, the app gives you a one-touch button for fast accident and breakdown recovery and it'll automatically alert the rescue services in the event of an accident. Uh, there's much more too. Uh, via the Mercedes Me app, you can check your X-Class vehicle status, uh, query where it's parked or how much fuel is in the tank, and you can get live traffic information too. If you loan the vehicle out, you'll have access to a vehicle tracker which can show the location of a moving X-Class on a navigation map. And there's also a geofencing feature, and that will tell you if the vehicle has left a predefined area. Enough with the standard spec. What do you get if, like most potential buyers, you want something a bit nicer than base pure spec can offer? Well, ideally, you'll want at least a stretch to mid-range progressive trim, and that's recognizable by a look that's uh, less utilitarian. The entry model's rather unbecoming dark plastic rear bumpers replaced by body-colored ones that, at the front with this trim level, sit above a matte black simulated underguard. At progressive level, you also get 17-inch alloy wheels, heated mirrors, auto wipers, brand aluminium door sills and a useful load securing rail system for the cargo bed. Inside there's carpeted flooring, an upgraded eight speaker sound system, uh, an auto dimming rear view mirror with an integrated compass and leather trim for the steering wheel and the gear knob. If you want a luxury saloon feel inside your X-Class though, you'll need the top power spec that we're trying today. Uh, this gives you man-made Artico leather upholstery with classy Dynamica microfiber trim, an eight-way electrically adjustable driver's seat with lumbar adjustment, thermotronic automatic climate control and aluminium style interior trim. Outside of this level, you get smart 18-inch wheels, a front underguard trimmed in chrome, uh, power folding mirrors, piercing full LED headlights, and brighter LED tail lamps. We're a bit surprised that parking sensors and navigation are missing at this level, though. Now, let's look at the options. Uh, Mercedes reckons that the majority of X-Class buyers are going to want to personalize their vehicles and has therefore provided the widest possible range of accessories in order they should be able to create a very individual feel. Uh, before getting into the stylized items, though, you'll need to ask yourself whether you're likely to be regularly using your X-Class off-road. Now, if that answers yes, you'll need the optional differential lock for the rear axle and the increased ground clearance package, which will give you an increased springing length that raises the ride height by 20 millimeters. Regular mud pluggers would also be wise to specify the underride guide panel that protects the engine and the transmission from potentially ruinous off-road knocks. Um, whatever driving challenges you have in mind, you'll almost certainly also want to fit a tow bar. Plus, we'd want to consider a set of winter tires too. Beyond the basics, it's best to start the bespoke ordering process by perusing the various different optional packages. Uh, perhaps the most significant spec feature missing from the standard trim levels is parking sensors. Uh, with pure spec, uh, plus package adds these in along with the load rail securing system. With other models, you get the sensors as part of a parking package. That also includes a 360 degree surround view camera. Most buyers go for the winter package, and that gives you heat for the front seats and the washer fluid jets. And with the mid-range progressive models, there's also the optional comfort package, and that will give you some of the key interior niceties of a top-spec trim, including the Artico leather upholstery, thermotronic climate control, and the power-adjustable front seats with lumbar adjustment.
And when it comes to individual optional features, probably the most significant thing to consider is whether you want to upgrade the infotainment system from the standard 7-inch Audio 20 setup to the Command Online Navigation package with its larger 8.4-inch screen. Now, this is optionally available above entry-level trim, and it comes with hard disk drive 3D sat-nav, uh, live traffic information, and Lingotronic voice control. If you can't quite stretch to that premium setup, a Garmin Map Pilot navigation package can be added into the standard Audio 20 package. Onto aesthetics, avoid entry level trim and you'll be offered a style package that we have here with running boards, roof rails, privacy glass and a larger size of alloy wheel. Uh, with mid-range progressive trim, the style package also gets you full LED headlamps and tail lights. With top spec power trim, the package also includes an electrically operable panel in the centre of the rear window. And we mentioned wheels, there are 17, 18 or 19 inch rim options which might be of interest uh, depending on which trim level you've gone for. Uh, you might well want one of the extra cost metallic paint shades too. We've got Axinit bronze here and some buyers might not be able to resist adding in that signature pickup feature, a thick styling bar to frame the back of the cab compartment. As for the cabin, well, velour floor mats are optional and on the top power variants, you can add in real leather upholstery in black or brown and grained wood style trim if you really want an S-class style ambiance. Of course, there are the usual practical pickup extras like an optional hardtop canopy with or without roof rails, uh, which works with the vehicle's central locking system and features interior lighting and bespoke trim. Alternatively, you might want to look at a cover for the load bed, which can be either rigid or of the roll-top variety. Beneath such a cover, a bed divider would be useful to separate smaller items. And for the cargo bay, we'd want to look at the optional floor rails, uh, the load liner kit that'll protect this area from dents and scrapes, and the lockable stowage box, plus carrier bars that clip onto the roof rails and all season rubber interior mats might prove to be a wise investment. Uh, you might also be interested to know that the X-Class can even form the basis for a camper van. On to safety. Uh, autonomous braking systems might now be pretty familiar in the passenger car world, but this kind of setup is still relatively unusual to find in a pickup. So we were pleased to find that the Mercedes Active Brake Assist package is standard on every X-Class variant, and that's there to warn the driver of an impending collision and brake automatically if there's no response. Uh, this setup is primarily responsible for this model's five-star Euro NCAP crash test showing, and testing's indicated that having it will eradicate 20% of nose to tail accidents and will decrease their severity in a further 25% of cases. Uh, all models also get lane keeping assist, which warns you if you're drifting out of your lane on the highway. Uh, traffic sign assist, which pictures speed signs as you pass and then displays them on the dash. And if you specified a tow bar, there's also trailer stability assist, and that prevents dangerous trailer sway. Uh, now, earlier, we also referenced the standard e-call automatic emergency response feature, and that will alert the emergency services to your exact geographical location if the airbags go off in an accident. Other safety features are more familiar. There's hill start assist to get you up steep slopes and a DSR, downhill speed regulator, to ease you down the other side. Uh, plus there are the usual electronic aids for braking, traction and stability control. Now, should all of this fail to prevent a crash, then you'll be looked after by seven airbags, twin front side and curtain bags, plus a driver's knee bag. And there are rear Isofix charge seat anchorage points. So, how practical will this X-Class prove to be in day-to-day -day use? Let's pull down the lockable tailgate with this big centrally mounted handle and find out. And you can hold it in place horizontally if you need to carry extra long loads, but there's no chance of dropping the thing down completely because, as with most rivals, the large rear bumper gets in the way. Uh, the bed floor height is 854 millimeters from the ground. Once you get your stuff in, the cargo bed is usefully long, measuring 1,587 millimetres. That's a segment leading figure, which makes this bay fractionally longer than that of a comparable Nissan Navara. Uh, there's more width between the wheel arches than you get with that Japanese Model 2, 1,215 millimetres. And that would be enough uh, to cross-load this Euro pallet uh, if we didn't have this optional load liner. And the total side-to-side -side width figure of 1560 millimeters though is exactly the same as that of a Navara, as is the 474 millimeter load space height figure. 
Overall, there's a total loading capacity inside this platform of 2.48 cubic meters. Uh, to give you some segment perspective on all that, let's get beyond Nissan comparisons and pitch the practicalities of this Mercedes model's cargo bed against those of a class favorite like Mitsubishi's L200. Do that and you'll find that the loading area of the X-Class is more than 100 millimeters longer, around 90 millimeters wider, and it will offer significantly more clearance between the wheel boxes. So, no, you don't have to sacrifice practicality to get yourself a bit of extra style in this segment. Uh, as for the weight of items you can carry, well, as usual, the use of an automatic gearbox will likely reduce total payload capacity, uh, meaning that for the ultimate figure in an X-Class, you'll need a base X220D variant. That's the only one that can be had with a manual stick shift. Uh, with the entry-level model, you'll be able to lug around up to 1,087 kilos. If you go for the auto-only X250D derivative we're trying here, that reading falls only slightly to 1,066 kilos. Either way, if you combine that with with the generous size of this cargo area, you'll have the capacity to transport quite a lot. Uh, Mercedes tells us, for example, that an X-Class can transport up to 17 full 50-litre barrels of beer. We'll take their word for that. Uh, longer items like poles can be pushed through the centre part of the rear window, and if you've specified the roof rails above the cab, special carrier bars can be clipped to them for things like skis. Uh, bear in mind also that there is a generous maximum towing capacity of 3.5 tonnes across the X-Class range, and that's unbettered in the class. That means that uh, this vehicle will be able to pull an 8-metre yacht or a trailer containing three horses. And when you are hauling something of that weight, you'll still be able to carry up to 800 kilos in the cargo bay. Now, apart from the practical stats, we've appreciated the clever touches too. Uh, providing you avoid entry-level trim, you'll get this load-securing rail system. With this, uh, clamps slide along C-shaped channel tracks positioned on the rear cabin bulkhead and on either side of the loading bed here. As a result, even the most unusually shaped items can be easily secured. Uh, the LED cargo bay lighting is something else we like. Uh, the X-Class is the only pickup to get that as standard. Uh, this third brake lamp here contains LED lights which illuminate the whole load bed uh, with operation by a switch in the center console. As soon as the ignition switched on, the bay lighting turns off automatically. And finally, as usual with the pickup, there's the option of adding in rigid or roll top load bay covers, hard top canopies, uh, a bed divider, styling bars, and this branded load liner. On to running costs, and here a chink in the X-Class's armoury is revealed. Uh, you'd expect its fuel economy and CO2 figures to be pretty much the same as those of a Nissan Navara, given that this Mercedes uses the same engines. Actually, the readings you get are a little way off, and the reason why isn't difficult to determine. Uh, the extra length, the wider track, and the chassis strengthening of this Merc has perhaps inevitably taken its toll in terms of increased weight. An X220D tips the scales at 2,213 kilos in its entry-level form, and that's a full 227 kilos more than an equivalent Nissan Navara, and even 63 kilos up on the V6 engine Volkswagen Amarok. Uh, that's why the 37.2 MPG combined cycle fuel figure you'll get in an X220D is well shaded by the 44.8 MPG figure you'll get from a Navara with the same 163 HP power plant and the 35.8 MPG figure of this automatic 190 HP X250D is easily beaten by the 40.4 MPG reading of an identically engined automatic Navara. The MPG reading of the X350D, meanwhile, is 31.3 miles per gallon. Still, look on the bright side, the returns you do get are easily better than those of that Volkswagen Amarok, which for most buyers will be a much more relevant point of comparison. And you can monitor the success of your attempts towards frugality via a consumption display on the centre dash screen, which will graphically show vehicle economy over the last 15 minutes of use. CO2 emissions, though again some way off those of a Navara, are relatively class competitive too. Uh, the base X220D is rated at 200 grams per kilometer and the X250D rated at 207 grams per kilometer. The X350D meanwhile has a CO2 reading of 237 grams per kilometer. 
This X-Class model standards of cleanliness could be important if, or more likely when, the Treasury starts to rate pickups under the same kind of CO2-based personal taxation system that's used for ordinary cars. Now, currently, benefit in kind taxation on this kind of pickup is a flat rate of £3,150, regardless of emissions, and business users will pay at 20, 40 or 45% rates, depending on their income. This applies because this vehicle has a payload of over 1,000 kilos, so it qualifies for lower commercial vehicle company car tax rates. And of course, because that payload figure uh, qualifies this Mercedes as a light commercial vehicle, businesses can reclaim the VAT from the original purchase price. Uh, bear in mind that the diesel engines use uh, the usual selective catalytic reduction process that requires a urea and water mixture called AdBlue. Now, the reason we're telling you that is that the AdBlue mixture needs to be periodically topped up. That's something you can get done as part of regular maintenance. Uh, service intervals, they're determined by the standard assist service computer, which calculates when garage visits are needed based on actual vehicle usage. Uh, if you want some stats to plan around, though, uh, Mercedes quotes... The the need for uh, service intervals every 18,000 miles and it offers flexible service care plans which enable you to budget ahead for maintenance. Uh, what else? Well, residuals should be class leading. As for insurance, well, for the X220D and this X250D, you're looking at a Group 33 rating under a commercial vehicle policy. Uh, you'll also want to know that there is an unlimited mileage, three-year warranty with 12 years of anti-perforation cover. Plus, you get the unique Mercedes-Benz Mobilovan UK package, which offers 24-hour roadside assistance cover for up to 30 years, providing you get your vehicle regularly serviced at one of Mercedes franchise dealers. The whole idea of being able to drive a luxurious Mercedes while still claiming the tax benefits of a commercial vehicle is certainly appealing. And so is this X-Class model. We wish the styling had lived up to the prototype's promise, but what's been delivered here is still easily the most desirable pickup on the market. As it should be for the prices being asked, Mercedes chose its donor model wisely, the Nissan Navara underpinnings providing this contender with driving dynamics that'll impress those who are used to the crude responses of obvious rivals. Now, all pickups can combine the off-road ability of an extreme SUV with the carrying capacity of a small truck, but this one can do all that while also delivering much of the cabin quality and the highway refinement of a luxury saloon. In its own way, it's as close as it's currently possible to get to some people's idea of the automotive ultimate. If you can afford an X-Class and you want a pickup of this sort, then there aren't many significant things you won't like about it. True, some of the less obvious interior fittings don't feel very Mercedes-like, but those are parts that really need to be durable to suit this vehicle's station in life. Other than that, um, well, there are a handful of carryover Nissan parts that don't seem quite appropriate. Uh, the four-cylinder diesel engine, that could be a touch quieter and also a touch more economical. Um, the option of a permanent rather than a part-time four-wheel drive system on the mainstream models, that would be nice to have. And it is a bit of a pity that the mid-range 190 HP engine that most will want can't be had with a manual gearbox. That's about it, though, when it comes to grumbles. Otherwise, the X-Class gets a very complete scorecard from us. As well as the attributes already mentioned, it's the safest pickup in the class and the best connected too. Yet, it also still manages to be as suitable for heavy duty use as the best of its rivals. Other models in this class try to achieve luxury by throwing leather upholstery, better infotainment and chromed bull bars at the standard spec. An X-Class, in contrast, feels upmarket by design. The difference is important. And if you're seeking something in this sector, it might be enough to make this X really hit the spot. Mm -hmm.